Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Henry's Funky Flash Tutorials. Now before we begin, I would just like to say thank you guys for your recent support on the last episode um, on the idle animations. That that really makes me happy. That's the first time that this channel has actually been active in a couple of years. So before we begin, I just wanted to clarify that, that I'm really thankful for all your guys' support. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to Henry's Funky Flash Tutorials. Now, this is the second lesson in the series, and today we will be going over how to do posing animations for your Friday Night Funkin' character, and the correct like way and proportions of how to do that. So, let's talk about how um, a normal Friday Night Funkin' animation is done. So, let's click on this little example that I have set up here. This is from a previous project that I did. So, I'll go ahead and show you. It's not entirely finished, however, I am willing to present it to you. So, here we have me, you know, as a Friday Night Funkin' character. And this is, as you can see right here, according to the symbol, this is my left pose. I'm going to go ahead and play it. Now let's go ahead and examine this frame by frame. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, So this means that a normal posing animation, if it's not looping back to its original pose, should only be two frames in length. Here's an example of what you do not do. You do not motion tween or classic tween these two frames why you may ask well look here oh wait probably doesn't work on flash it it definitely doesn't work on flash i'll just cut to a presentation of what it would look like in adobe Anime. All right, so we are in Adobe Animate. Now let's get the tween set up. So this is what I'm referring to. Notice how two frames turn into three. That is not what we want. We want it two, two frames, and strictly two frames in length. Now, one point I should probably bring up on the first frame of animation, the mouth on the character will be the biggest. And here's what I mean by that. So we have this mouth drawn here. Let's go ahead, X that frame out. And let's draw a frame as if it were talking. See, notice how the mouth is the biggest on the first frame. While you are doing a sort of talking or moving, position on the mouth of your character, you want to make sure that the first frame of the mouth is the biggest. Not the second frame is the biggest, but the first frame of animation 
has the biggest mouth. Now, this is just a personal preference, but I believe that this gives the best outcome when you are doing an it and uh, posing animation. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys a quick, quick little brief overview of how to do a good posing animation. I do not recommend copying this because it probably won't turn out the best, but this is just me giving a brief example of what I think and how it looks like. So, like last tutorial, we're gonna need to draw a head. I mean, line art doesn't really matter here because it's kind of just an example. Let's go ahead, color it in. Actually, now let's go ahead and give him. Let's give him a tint. Let's give him a red tint, maybe. Little magenta purple tint, maybe, or maybe a red. Who knows? Yeah, that looks good. So let's practice the shading trick taught in the last video. Boom, done. So we have our head. Now let's draw the body. Oh, that reminds me. One thing I should probably mention because not a lot of people get this right, but when you are animating using either pre-made assets or you're animating, you're thinking about animating entirely new poses, I suggest using the body from the idle animation and reusing that for the poses. Now you can create Maybe you can create a couple new poses that will loop back into the idle. But, I recommend for the poses, using the body that you used, the same symbol for the idle animation that you used, for doing the posing animations. Now, like I said with a lot of other things that I teach, this is just a personal preference, but I believe that this gives quite possibly the best outcome, because I've learned this from first-hand experience when, you know, practicing idle animations and working on a whole bunch of different mods that you probably want to use the same symbol that you use for the idle animation when you're animating other poses. Call me a BSer all you want, but this is just my knowledge and I'm sharing it with you guys. So, we have our body. Now, Obviously, I'm not following my own rules because this is just an example that I'm creating to show my own poses, but I put it on the wrong layer. The also, one thing that you want to keep out for, and this is a mistake that I make quite frequently, make sure that you're drawing your body parts on the same layers because if you aren't, it can create big problems. Trust me, I know. It can stress you the heck out and it's not fun so 
Anyways, with that out of the way, we have our body. And we have our head. So, let's get a hand up in here. As much as I would like to give a tutorial on how to draw a Friday Night Funkin' hand, I know that I probably can't do it, but Friggin', let's do it anyways. So, let's start off with a square. Regular old square. And let's just do a couple, like, you know, fingers up type pose, like maybe a little peace sign, maybe. And the mic being held right there. So, the way we want to plan this, we have our square. Let's go ahead and add one rectangle. And the other rectangle right here. So they're connected. And let's go ahead and add another rectangle and a rectangle on that. So we have basically a little peace sign hand. And let's add a little rectangle right here, a little rectangle right there. And you see this little edge right here, you're going to want to add a rectangle, a small little rectangle, which presents the ridge of the hand, if that makes sense. Anyways, let's make a little mic template here. And let's draw a rectangle to present the thumb. So we have our hand. Now it's going to look a little wonky. Trust me. But this right here is going to turn into something awesome. So let's just, let's just title this hand. Now I changed it to a graphic so I can change the opacity to, or alpha, quote unquote alpha as Adobe anime, uh, fuck, <laughs> Adobe calls it. So we change the opacity so we can have it as reference for our line art. Now, whenever you're drawing F and F hands, I always see people mess up the knuckles. I don't particularly enjoy seeing people messing up the knuckles. So I'm going to show you guys how I do my knuckles. I'm trying to figure out like a way to word this. Um, so it's kind of just like a hill. So we got, or I don't know what my geography, my geography teacher should have taught me this, but let's just say it's a mountain. So I don't remember what that's called. It's let's just say it's a mountain. So we have our mountain. Let's make three, no, four, four mountains. And Let's do a little ridge right here. So, I know this looks a little wonky right now, but trust me, like I said, this is going to turn into something great. So what we have right here is the basis of what our hand is going to look like. Now we just need these two extra fingers right here. And let's trace the ridge. What are they, vegetables or fruit? <clears throat> and what does that make? Ketchup. <clears throat> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Yeah, uh, it's not looking so good. Anyways. Can't believe I thought this was going to be something good. So, instead of trying to, like I said, instead of trying to cheat, Trying to cheat the system. I'm gonna just draw my own little hand and 
not care about the way anybody else draws theirs and go about my life. take the original skin tone. Sorry, I'm just getting the hand shaded and situated. Oh, didn't. What is wrong with me today? I just haven't picked up the right colors at all. It's pretty sad. All right, so we have our hand. Now, this is looking like a pretty wonky hand, but trust me, this is just a presentation of what you're supposed to do on an island mission. This isn't a hands tutorial, this is just a posing tutorial. So, now that we have all of our parts prepared, we can begin to work on the face animation which was a big part that I brought up earlier so let's just do two little dots for the eyes and let's do Uh, I don't know what shape that is, but pretty cool shape. Oh, there we go. Anyways. Oh, um, forgot to, forgot to elongate it to 15 frames so it can show up on the timeline. Anyways. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter what color later. So, like I said before, make sure that the first frame, the mouth on the first frame is the biggest in the two, between, the biggest when compared to the two frames. So, this will just present, like I said, this will present the best outcome. Now, let's size the mouth down a bit. See, a cool way, I guess, to do this would just to be redrawing the mouth and like squatting it down, but we're not going to do that here because we don't want to save time. We just want to present a decent way to do this. So, as I said before, make sure that the first frame's mouth is the biggest. And that is what we did here. Wait a minute, wait a goddamn minute. Uh... Okay, since I can't find the little spectacle that we're missing here, let's just go with it. So we have our mouth animations. Now let's position these to the head. So, if that makes sense. So when you're posing, you want to make sure that 
First frame is a little more down than the second frame. Now, like I said, just a personal preference, but this will present the best outcome. Anyways, so like I said, we have our two frames of mouth and head animation. So, ba, ba. Anyways, let's get into animating the rest of the parts, such as the hand. Now, the hand is relatively easy, pretty much. You don't have to reanimate the hand. You just kind of have to move it down a little bit. So just like that, you can do the alt, the hold alt, um, rotate trick again that we talked again, that we talked about in the last lesson. Now. Let's get into body animation. So, the way the body animation works while you are animating a right pose, for example, you're gonna wanna move it on the second frame, hold alt, and you see this little dragging against, these little plates dragging against each other when you are on this part of the body. Oh, wait. Don't hold off, my bad. That was my bad. Just drag it back a little bit and like this. So da, 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 da. Do not hold alt because that will present you with this. You don't, you don't want that. You want a smooth transition from the first frame into the second frame while the feet are stabilized. It is important, it is very, I cannot express this enough, it is very important that the feet are stabilized between the first and the second frame because if they are unsynchronized, for example, let me just do the trick that I was talking about earlier, like this, something like this. If it is very unsynchronized, then it will not look good and the offsets will be quite a challenge and we'll probably have to go back and reanimate the product. I know, I know it sucks, but yep, it's just the way, just the way life goes. Now, let's go ahead and bear animation on the timeline. Now, I know this goes against what I said before. However, if you want a little bit of a smoother outcome, you can go ahead and go for three frames. I know it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty sad that I went back on my word, but this is for this is optional. However, if you would like to incorporate a third frame into your posing animation, make sure that the third frame is only moved back, moved back the slightest bit from its original pose in the second frame. Now what I mean by that, so we have this pose on the second frame. So notice how it's going up a little bit on the first and second, we're only going to want to change that position slightly so that it's not like jittering and so that it looks smooth. So if you, if you can see what I just did, I just moved back a little bit. So it almost looks like he's pushing back this hand.
Now, third frame on the body, pretty much same ordeal as the hand. Just move it back the slightest bit. So, this is our semi final product. We just need to, you know, color the mouth in. Now, it's probably not looking too good, which is why I recommend going with two frames. I don't normally do three frames, but if it is necessary and I do think that it will look better, I will typically add a fourth, or third, my bad. I will typically add a fifth, I will add a third frame. Bro, I, what is wrong with me? Like, I, I can't speak, bro. It's, Excuse me. Anyways. I believe that I have done my job here. Oh. Now, I know it wasn't a good example in the beginning. However, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean further when I go ahead and show you guys what this would look like if I tuned it. Because none of this is converted into symbols. This is all pure drawing on the canvas. This hasn't been converted into anything. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut to what it would look like in Animate with tweens and to prove my point further as to why you should not use tweens. So we are back into Animate and I have my example here. We'll go ahead and play it for you. Now, let's go ahead, watch that frame by frame. Notice how it's smooth. And notice how it's more than two frames. Also, notice how the mouth is very glitched in the third frame. That in itself is why you should not rely on tweening to do your animation work for you. And with that, I rest my case. Thank you all for watching this installment in the Henny's Funky Flash tutorial series. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day and goodbye.